This video is going to look at how you can set up default formal parameters for a Python function. A default formal parameter is a formal parameter that assumes a default value if a value is not provided by the argument, in other words the actual parameter in the function call. Consider this computer program here. We can see we have a function and here we have a call to the function. Within the function we can see that we have a loop and looking here we can see that we have two formal parameters message and times and if we have a look at the message we can see that that's been assigned default. If we look at times we can see that's been assigned two. Now these are the default values for the formal parameters. If we look at the call we can see here in the brackets there are no parameters being passed, there are no actual parameters. Now another word for actual parameters are arguments. So when we actually execute this program this value of 2 which is assigned to times will be here in the range function consequently this loop is going to execute twice and it's going to print the message and that's the message that's been assigned this value default string here. So when this program actually runs what we would expect to see at the output is this. It is actually output this string twice. Let's contrast this particular program with this one here and if you look in this region you can see I've made an amendment. I've just put the formal parameters as message and as times. I haven't given them any default value. And if you come down here and you look at this, this is a call to the function. And that's no different than the call we saw in the last program. But when we actually execute this, what will happen is this. It crashes. Now the reason it crashes is given to us by this cryptic message here. And it says type error. Multiple display missing two required positional arguments, message and times. In other words, if you look at the brackets here, we've put nothing in those brackets. But because this is requiring these two to be passed to it, we can see we haven't. So the program actually crashes. Now compare that to this program. You see here, we didn't pass anything in, but because we set up message and times with default values, then we had an output as you can see here. In other words, it didn't crash. Let's now consider this computer program. And if we look at the function, we can see it's the same as the first function we looked at. Because in this area, you can see that I have given message and times a default value. If we look at the call, however, you can see that the call is using keyword arguments. Here, message is assigned hello world and here times is assigned 5. Consequently, when we call using this, the hello world will be assigned to message overriding this default string. This 5, which is assigned to times, will be given to this times overriding the default value of 2. Consequently, the times here will be 5 and this message here will be hello world so when the program executes, this is what we will see. We will see hello world as being printed out five times. But it doesn't get away from the fact that we set up default values here. It's just that these keyword arguments overwrote the default values that we set up. Let's now consider this here. We can see we've set up the default values. But if we look to the call, you can see that I've got a keyword argument times being assigned 7. What this will do, it'll overwrite this default value here, where times was 2 according to the default value, but now we're overriding it with the 7. So times here will be 7, which means we're going to go around the loop 7 times. And of course, we're going to be printing the message and the message is going to be the default value because we haven't shown any keyword arguments in here that's capable 
of overruling this default value. So what we will get at the output is this. We can see that default has been printed seven times. So let's now consider this computer program and we can see we have the same default values but if you look to the call you can see in the brackets here I've used a keyword argument set to hello world. So this hello world is going to overwrite this string here. Consequently when we go around the loop we're going to be printing hello world not this default value. And of course we can see the times that we're going around the loop is set to 2 by this default value here. Consequently, we would expect the output to be the displaying of hello world twice. So let's just see if that is the case. This is the output and we can see it's displayed hello world twice. Let's now consider this computer program and you can see that we're using the same defaults. If we however turn our attention to the call and look in the bracket what we can see is here I've got hello world and we can see that that has not been done using keyword arguments it's been done using positional arguments however if we look at this we can see that is an example of keyword arguments so the hello world will overwrite the default and this three will overwrite the two so when this program runs, we would expect Hello World to be printed three times. And we can see that it is. Let's now consider this computer program. And we can see that the default values are the same. But if you look to the call, what you can see in the brackets, here we have a keyword argument. And the three you can see is a positional argument. Now... You might expect that the output from this program would be hello world three times like the last one. However, let's see what it actually outputs. It outputs a syntax error which says non-keyword argument after keyword argument. Now what this means is if you decide to have a keyword argument first, you cannot follow that by a positional argument. Whereas up here, you can see here we had a positional argument followed by a keyword argument and that was fine it produced the output but here when we have these the other way round i.e. the keyword argument first followed by the positional argument it causes a syntax error so just be careful of that when you're using positional arguments with keyword arguments you have to make sure you get them the right way round Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Google Plus circle that relates to these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.